Hello, welcome to Freebie Friday. We're going to be playing a new game, My Brother Lives in a Canyon. This is uh, 2021 by Kenneth Dodrill. Has five uh, Steam achievements. Um, so that we're all on the same page, uh, this is an Aesop rock sort of fable uh, where the radio symbolizes his brother who is actually dead. So he's actually talking to no one. It's uh, kind of more like he's imagining a conversation he wishes he had and i thought this review summed it up quite nicely um this felt like a real conversation between me and a brother that i never had it felt like a conversation i wish i could have with my dad my dog my old friends the list goes on i wanted it to be real but i knew that knew what it's like and i knew why i wanted it to be real that's why the game is so important is what I want but can never have. It's beautiful. And that's kind of what happens in this game. Uh, this guy, uh, his brother's been dead for a year. And uh, he's kind of having a conversation he w wishes that he could have had while his brother was alive. But cannot. And I want you to listen to the symbology of the conversation. Of course the canyon itself is probably not real. Uh, it's a very weird canyon and it probably just refers to when you dig, uh, when you bury something really, really deep in your mind. That's the canyon. Enjoy. Tom, you there? Hey, Jake. Hi, Tom. Sorry I'm late. There were a few people broken down on the road. That's okay. So how have things been? Not much going on here. Well, I guess that makes sense. How are mom and dad? Mom is still mom. Dad, kind of funny. Dad is recently super into race cars. But he hated watching races. He always used to say that it's not a real sport. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what changed, but now he loves them. Well, how about you? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Now, he doesn't sure? really answer that. And his uh, father evidently was going to race cars after his son died. Alright, how's your job going? I hate it. I think I'm just not cut out to work with other people. You've always been a party over here, I'll be over there kind of guy. How's Beth? She's alright. She asked about you the other day. What'd she say? Mostly just wondering how you can be living here. I wonder that too. It's been a year since he died, so evidently why it came, he came up in a question. You there, Jake? Yeah, I'm here. Remember when I would delete your save games when we were kids? Yeah, I stopped playing games for a while because of that. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about that now. That's a metaphor, deleting Mom safe games. Still don't know. No. I wonder how they would respond. Probably wouldn't believe me. You could just take them here. Do you really want that? Maybe in the future, if I'm still here. And that law is never answered. Uh, we don't know why the protagonist hasn't told his mum and dad yet. Tom, you there? It could be because of what we're going to see in this hut. So if this isn't a real canyon, it's uh, the people referencing the hut are uh, probably...
probably important to the protagonist as well. And we're going to see a little notes about Norm, Norman and Anne Littner. Um, now these guys uh, have only been together for two, two and a half years. Uh, here he says he's going to leave, separate, divorce, whatever Norman's living in. And uh, only after two years being together. Uh, here we have uh, the day that they met and how long they've been. And then eventually the last is a date of where she commits suicide. Now later on down the valley we're going to see the gravestones and we're going to see that uh, Norman lived 14 years after this. So was this a stepmom? Were the brothers twins? Is this the mum and dad or is this somebody else important to the protagonist? The law doesn't really say but uh, what would be interesting is if those answers uh, were apparent coming back from our journey from the bottom of the canyon uh, but that is hasn't been made yet and coming back the journey would be different than going down so if the developer wanted to continue his madness opus he can yep i guess i lost you for a bit you know what i really miss what's that root beer i love root beer remember that hat i would wear with that root beer logo on it yeah man you wouldn't wash that thing. It's so gross. That's just how much I loved root beer. Listen to any good music lately? To be honest, I've been too busy. Sometimes I'll listen in the car though. About a year since we listened together. Well, next time I can bring a radio or something. Might not work well in here. That's true. I'll just bring a CD player then. What kind of music do you want me to bring? Reggae. Is that it? I don't remember you ever listening to reggae before. I just want to try something new, is all. Okay, Tom. Jake, I get really lonely out here. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm really glad that you are. I am too. I'm really glad that you come to see me as often as you do. Me too, Tom. Hey, remember when we went to the river near here? Yeah, with the with the canoe. No, with the kayaks. Oh yeah, when you left me stranded. I didn't leave you stranded. We were just joking around. You and your friends took my paddle and left me there. Yeah, I guess we did. Sorry about that. It's okay, I don't really care. I'm just messing with you. Now you'll notice that uh, the conversation doesn't have any uh, sinister oh. overtones. Oh, um, yeah, Jake's not feeling guilty of any sort. Uh, he doesn't blame himself for the murder or anything like that. He's just trying to cope with the absence of his brother and that's pretty much all and it's kind of noble that that's there it doesn't mean that there isn't law as i said it doesn't make any sense that he hasn't told his brother uh, uh or his mother and dad about his brother's death My back. yeah i can hear you now every time you come here we always end up talking about the past which isn't bad, but I wish we had more recent stories to tell. Well, there are still lots of good stories to tell. Like what? Do 
you remember that time when you were on the softball team? Yeah, Coach Douglas. Right. Remember that game where the players found a gopher? Oh yeah, I always wondered what happened to that little guy. The coach killed it. Oh, that's sad. How do you know that? That's all I'm doing. Over by the dumpster. Nobody else saw, I don't think. Huh? That's crazy. How is that a good news story? What the hell? So here we have Norman Littner. Uh, he died at 44 years of age. And we have his wife who died at 30 years of age. As I said, is he stepmom? Did I lose you again? Not sure. But why hasn't he brought his brother out here? I mean, ultimately, his dead body's just around the corner. It would be easy just to bring his body out here. But uh, he's never, he's kept them separate. And here we are in the cavern. Uh, it has a little, it's no, no jump scare. It's just plays, uh, messes with your mind that something's about to happen. I'll let the game finish off. What? Tom, can you hear me? <laughs> Jake, just keep walking in a straight line. A friend of mine is playing Hell Divers. <laughs> what a time okay. for that screen name to come up. There's a lantern on your left. Just turn it on. Hi, Jake. Hey, Tom. And that's the end of the walking simulator. Um, that is by Kenneth Dodrill. That is, without a doubt, he's made the sopers at the moment. Uh, he's done two games. They're both free on Steam. He's done a lot more on that on his uh, Itch.io page. Uh, we'll probably do a video and uh, showcase all the other games so you can see who Kenneth Dodrill really is and uh, what his developing career is like. He claims Dungeon Nix is his best game, but I'm, yeah, I still think uh, My Brother Lives in a Canyon is. And this is the his personal blog page. This is what he looks like. This is the only photo I can find of him as he has. Um, so this is, looks like he's uh, American in Kentucky. Um, let's have a look at his pro, uh, blog. So this is talking about how to be a nice programmer. After all the ranting, basically at the end he says, read books like How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I've read the book, it basically just says, you're not important, the other person is. And that's not a trick, that's a, a pretend, uh, something to pretend about. It's you have to believe that. And if you have that inside you, you'll become a better person. Now, he hates social media. He recommends everyone just do a max exodus from social media. He talks about the go, uh, the uh, usually what people claim is good points and how it doesn't really add up. Uh, he it breeds narcissism, a false sense of community, and manipulation. And he's referring to people to basically get out of all their social media accounts like he has. This is why I only was able to find one photo. But he does uh, communicate in a uh, forum where there's 18,000 people in it. Hmm, okay. I wouldn't call that a community. Um, I, I agree with him. You can have more better conversations with a small amount of people. Usually large communities can turn rather toxic pretty quickly. It uh, depends on the moderation more than anything. Um, he also says how he hates Unity and Unreal Engine. Um, he personally will not buy a game that has that. 
Uh, here he says Dungeon Nix is his best game, which I, I'll show you that in the next video, but uh, I believe still uh, we've played his Madness Opus at the moment. I hope he continues with it. I'd like to see us get our brother out of the canyon. Um, he's saying he's uh, changed his phone device to a uh, dumb phone. He's uh, focusing more on his garden family, uh, more on his mental state and physical health, um, etc. Uh, he wants to refocus, um, basically. Um, that's basically about it. Uh, a, lo uh, a few developers have uh, stated that um, they caught a, sort of became disillusioned by the market, uh, especially since their games weren't as popular as what they thought they would be, I guess. Um, what have we got here? Uh, so in this one he talks about um, his, uh, his game really wasn't worth it. His paid game he made $150 from and uh, he didn't see any of that because Steam has a $200 limit on payouts and he made uh, $30 from Michio. So he actually made a deficit from submitting the game of uh, $20. Uh, which I can understand why you would be disillusioned for that. Um, here he talks about his other games, politi uh, Politician Simulator, Ghost Simulator, uh, how he's using a different program. Again, he doesn't like that program that he's been using, Lua. Um, and here he just talks about all the games that he's actually enjoyed himself and he recommends and I've put all these games on my wish list so I, I have but this is a blog he it is nowhere to comment on the blog you can only send him an email and since he's uh, disconnected he doesn't really respond I thought this was funny because he uh, says he doesn't like unity or unreal engine and yet uh, school uh, uses him as a uh, uh, a, a statement he's made to say thank you for teaching me how to how to use unity you've changed my life <laughs> uh, this was the original what the game originally looked like which is unlock a canyon uh, this was the original um, camper van and you see a lot of work went into this uh, a lot of details I'll show you a video at the end and let the developer talk about it himself uh, here he talks about, um, I've created the game in Godot, uh, using Blender for modeling, Critter for concept art, Gimp for asset editing, Audacity for voice recording and music editing and other tools I'm not remembering at the moment. Um, and he's extremely grateful for the open source community. Thanks to his family, his girlfriend, uh, Philip Moore for, uh, uh recording with him. So that was his friend. Um, you'll find the developer was the voice of Jake, I think. I started by writing up the story. This is him. What I would need for the game. Like what models I would need, sound effects, music, etc. Originally the game was going to be in 2D. It was going to be a fairly small game and I wanted to do vector art for it. I had never done this before and had been doing a lot more 3D art recently. So I decided to take that route instead. The story changed a lot. At first, the story was going to be about some kid who was walking around the forest with a walkie-talkie. Eventually, he would pick up a signal that would be another kid. He would talk about different things like video games and music, but at the end, you would find their body. I still think it's a good idea, but I couldn't really think of a good name for the game that wasn't similar to what inspired it, Night in the Woods. After writing up the story, I looked at reference images of RVs in Midwest America. I could never find the image again to give it credit, but I chose a color palette on low spec and drew that picture in Krita. It turned out pretty well, and I ended up using the backdrop as a header image on my itch.io page. Then I started modeling. I began with a basic ground model and found a cool dither shader to apply. I made a simple FPS controller and then continued to model the rest of the assets. The longest asset to work on was probably the ground, but the RV took me a solid 10 to 12 hours. Once I got done with a couple of trees, I searched for add-ons in Godot for scattering assets. 
Trees are fairly easy to make in Blender with their sapling tree generator plugin, which comes in it by default. You just have to enable it. Sam Shanley reached out to me on Reddit and did the music for the game. It was really important to me that the music was a big focus, so I wanted something special. I think Sam did a wonderful job, and it fits the game perfectly. I, I recorded agree. voices with a friend of mine just for fun, but also to save some money. We aren't professional voice actors or anything, but I think it turned out pretty good. I found some videos on how to apply walkie-talkie-like voice effects and audacity, and then I added some radio sounds and static I got from freesound.org. I really focused on visuals early in development so I could get an early teaser trailer up. I knew that it wouldn't take too long to develop the rest of the game, but I still gave myself an extra month just in case of any problems. I hooked up some cameras and paths in the game that when enabled, can load custom dialogue. Then I just recorded that, and my teaser trailer was done. I then announced the game and emailed a few smaller game news sites. I did receive some emails from PR companies, but I just didn't have the money. Also, I originally wanted to translate the game to many different languages, but it was just way too expensive. I was able to translate most of the interface and store descriptions to German, Chinese, and Russian. However, because I added some larger text in the game, after the translations, I couldn't mark the game as translated on Steam. When I announced the game, I think I expected a little bit more than what I got. I received a modest 80 to 100 upvotes on Reddit, some nice comments, and around 15 wishlists. As of the time that I'm recording this, the wishlist count is around 80. Not that much. I'm still hopeful for when the game releases, but even if it doesn't do well, that's okay. I've learned a lot. After announcement, I really started working hard on the game. I added a few more extra stories to the game, which meant some more models and systems in the code. I put the rest of the dialogue in and added more sound effects. I scripted the final cutscene and then set up all of my game options. I did feel some pressure to finish the game, but it wasn't stressing me out or anything. I ended up finishing the game a month and a half before release. I got my launch trailer done early and updated the screenshots. Now I have time to think about my next game, along with making sure the launch goes smoothly. If you want to check out the game, you can find it on Steam and itch.io. You can also go to the website to sign up for a one-time launch email when the game releases on July 22nd, 2021. This game is also open source, but the assets are proprietary. All of these links will be in the description. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to thank the developer, go play it yourself. It's completely free on Steam. Again, thank you, Kenneth Jodrell. I hope you haven't finished with it. I'd like to know why he didn't tell his mum and dad. Uh, maybe there's lore there. Uh, can we get our brother out of the canyon? Just some things to think about. Well, until next time, bye for now.